If you're freaking out because you haven't got a dungeon map ready for tonight's session, I think I have the perfect solution. Dungeon Scrawl is probably the best software at making a dungeon quick, easy, with full control, and it looks pretty damn good. I mean, there's loads of software out there for making high fidelity color maps if you know what you're doing. But if you like that sort of Dyson logo style of map, then Dungeon Scrawl is what you're looking for. I mean, I love it. I used it to make the starter dungeon All Hail Gek, link in the description, and I, I really don't know of a better showcase than for me to just go through it and show you how it works. Welcome to Mystic Arts. My name is Don. I'm a professional writer and director, and I've been DMing for 10 years. In this bonus Tuesday episode, we're making a map at my desk. Let's start by hitting Start Scrawling. You can see it asks us to create a new map, or we can open a save file. There's a, a pro subscription. We're just going to start by making a new map. And immediately it's opening up on this sort of grid that you can zoom in and out of. You can make huge maps, tiny maps. It's all up to you. It's got various sort of looks. You know, you can get this kind of Dyson logo style of thing. You can also get the uh, classic AD&D blue uh, poster map style dungeon. I have a lot of affection for that. I made a whole spaceship dungeon looking like this. Uh, by default, it lets you make these sort of half uh, maps, half grids, you know. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, so I'm going to disable that immediately. I go down here in division. Instead of one out of two, I make it one out of one. That way, it's always one by one. That's how I prefer it. You can switch through various sort of looks and styles. Be careful, this creates a bunch of layers, so I'm having to delete them now to go back to the sort of default that we wanted. Apply to current layer. There we go. Make sure not to click add new layer, but apply to current layer. I think I'm just going to use the default for now. Uh, down here, you got the rectangle tool. You can draw. Or, or you can erase. You can take the snap off so that you can sort of draw irregular shapes. Uh, and you can decide whether or not you've got the rough on there. So uh, this is what it looks like normally. If you switch the rough on, you can draw and then get these sort of squiggly lines. These are great if you're making caves or something like that. I'm going to put that off. I'm going to erase both of this. I say let's waste no time and let's make a dungeon really quick. doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, when I'm doing a dungeon, I like to start off with something that kind of inspires me. So uh, I, we're going to need a boss room. And for that, we're going to need a big room. Big room, I'm going to make it 14 by 18. Uh, those numbers I pull out of thin air. It's just big. It's big enough that we can put a bunch of stuff in here and have an awesome fight. Then I guess we got to think about what we're doing. Uh, I like the idea of this being a ballroom. So let's decide that this is a, a nice fancy house. Next to the ballroom, we've got a dining room. Let's put a dining room here north of it. Let's say it's about yay size. Uh, we're going to want to attach uh, a restroom and some kind of corridor that connects these two. We're going to need a kitchen, right? If we're doing like a noble estate or something. I'm going to extend this corridor here a bit. And you can notice if you put your square next to these lines, you draw it assumes there's like a small thin wall there, but if you extend over the line, it extends the room, right? So over the line, extends the room, on the other side of the line, wall. Let's do a foyer, and makes this foyer massive. Let's make it a smaller foyer, small yay. And then how big is this? 10 by 10. So then just for symmetry, we can go 10 by 10. Notice I'm using the drawing tool to measure, right? So this is three by three, we're going to go get the erase tool and cut out three by three. And we continue to sort of draw out uh, this house, you know, a house is a dungeon. A dungeon doesn't have to be underground, you know, dingy corridors, vaulted ceilings, made of stone and moss everywhere. Uh, a house is a dungeon. A tower is a dungeon. The library is a dungeon. A dungeon is that place where adventure happens, where your scenes are separated into rooms, right? Speaking of library, let's put one in here. I'm, I'm just going to draw this huge shape. Hang on, how big was this? 14 by 18, but it starts here. So 18, 14. You can use the scroll wheel to move around. You can do it while drawing. Very clever. I'm going to erase this bit here so we can put the corridor back. Draw. There we go. There really is no reason for this wall to be that thick, so I'm just going to take it out. I'm actually going to put it on the other side. So it's going to go like that and like that. That way this corridor can lead into both and then there can be a connecting door between. You know, this looks like a nice sort of house to me. It's got this front bit and these two wings. You can go into images here and it's got a whole library of these things. They're all sort of classic and they look kind of pencil drawy, which I think is just perfect for our purposes. Uh, you can see that there are artists here credited. You can see their um, Patreons and everything and you can, you can get these uh, packs. I don't think they cost anything. You can just put them right in. Looks fantastic. Uh, you can also specify here. You can see 
things you upload yourself. You could put your own tokens in here. Angry Golem, Spain, Castle Furniture, Plastic Cave Symbols. Oh, these are fun. Yeah, this is kind of what we need, right? Bushes, bookcase. Sometimes I go in here, I have no idea what's available, but I start, and then I end up having a great time. You know, you put some trees in, you just sort of spread them around. Big rug. Yeah, I love a big rug. Get a couple of statues here outside the front door. Speaking of which, we'll need a front door. See, there's loads of colorful options. I'm going to stick with the black and white just so that it fits with the rest here. Put a well, put it outside, you know. Put in some spiral staircases. Now, right now, they're assuming a white background. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead, click on the dungeon layer, and I'm going to swap layers, right? Apply to current layer. Now everything is white. So these stairs, they fit in a bit better, right? Uh, I'm going to put them here. I'm going to rotate by grabbing this little, little pin here. It would be great if these were PNGs, but they're not. So we're working with what we have. Door. And you can move them around. You can sort of copy paste, put them everywhere. Now, maybe you're watching this and thinking, Dadi, why are you doing it this uh, insane way instead of uh, using some function that I'm not aware of? Uh, and the answer is, I'm not aware of that function you're talking about that lets me uh, not have to sort of copy paste icons. Uh, I'm sure there is one. I just have not discovered it. But this is perfectly fine. You can, you can sort of just copy paste your way through, put the doors in, right? And very quickly, your dungeon's going to start, start taking shape. I like the idea of these bookcases. I'm going to go put them here. You can sort of Copy, paste in, in chunks, paste, turn them around. Uh, sadly, I have to do it individually, but, you know, we will make do. Move the door, make it make sense. There's also bigger bookcases, you know? Maybe that's what I should have been using. And then you just sort of play around with these things, right? What's fun about using software like this, as opposed to doing it all on graph paper, is that you have things suggested to you. Just by clicking around, you know, the software will suggest things and you might, you know, you might not think, oh, that's exactly what I wanted. But maybe, maybe you will be like, oh, you know, I hadn't thought about putting in a bunch of bookcases. So you can have this sort of agile process where you're just sort of learning what's in here because you're flipping through and you see cool icons. And you're like, oh, sure. Yeah, I'll put that in. Uh, it doesn't have to be holy. You don't need to be uh, beholden to uh, whatever. Right. Uh, you know, you can make a little dining area here. You know, it occurs to me I've made this whole thing too damn big. Well, what do we do in response to having made it too big? We cut content. Sometimes when you're cutting content, you might get a little pearl clutch and you're like, oh, no, you can't cut content. You can't do that. Oh, no, that's, you know, uh, it's bad. But I'm not beholden to that uh, ideology. I think you can just cut content when you don't like something. Cut it out. Throw it away. Don't enslave yourself to whatever it is you thought you needed it to be, you know. Oh, sure. Dining room here. There we go. You just sort of decorate your way through. You, you you play with it. As long as you're existing in a state of play, I think you're basically doing this correctly. Right? Fix some barrels in here. And remember uh, that lesson from the MapFu video that I was talking about Chris Perkins saying, you don't need a million things in a room. You just need enough that you know what it's all about. Right? Weapon rack. Right? So, oh, there's there's an armory in here? I guess. Why not? Rug. Let's get a, let's get another huge rug. Love a good rug. You know, you can mix styles or you can pick brush sets you like. You can upload your own brush sets if that's something that you have, if you have a bunch of brushes. Uh, you can also sort of stick to classic layouts. I'm a big fan of that sort of uh, simplistic style. Uh, there's something nostalgic for me in it. I also love columns. Columns are a great way to spruce up any dungeon environment because I never feel like I need to explain why they're there. They're, you know, they're structural in nature. You just sort of spread them out and then you've got cover built in for any anybody wanting to do cover things and suddenly there's a bit of gameplay anyway there you go i mean that's a simple dungeon it's it's not ready but you know uh, you know that's something uh, click export bam downloads it and there it is looks pretty nice you can zoom in you can scroll around uh, you can also get it as a pdf and hit save that requires the pro version but it will sort of save it out as individual pages which is kind of nice and here's something i definitely want to show you there is this plugin that goes right into wadabo uh you open the generator and it makes a dungeon for you and you go right click, export as JSON, and then you go grab the JSON, you put it right here, and bam, look, there it is. Right now it's in here, it's got all these files in it. So if you see something in Waterbow and you're like, oh, I want to change this, I want to edit this slightly, you can open it in here, and then you can go and grab your rectangle tool, and you can say, I'm just going to delete this room, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out this little side area here, and I'm actually going to add a connecting room uh, between these. And bam, there you go. You've immediately sort of done the adjustments for absolutely none of the time it would have taken you to figure all this out. Uh, so I think that's really cool. What you can then do is you can go ahead and uh, go into images. You can grab these circled numbers and you can go one, put it here, two, put it here, three, put it there, four. And then you just open up your word editor, right? You go into Obsidian and you go one, the barracks, two, the restroom, three, you know, and then you fill that out. And then uh, you've got all the map marked in your word processor of choice. Really, that's it. I just wanted to show you that this tool exists if you weren't aware of it. 
It's super neat and it's very effective at making maps quickly, easily, and fully customizably. That's one way to draw dungeons, but let's be honest, sometimes you want your dungeons to look amazing without you having to paint every brick by hand. What if you could just browse a massive fantasy map collection full of battle maps, scenic backdrops, and tokens all professionally illustrated and ready to drop into your game? Well, then you should do yourself a favor and check out JPEKU, the sponsor of today's video. They offer three separate subscriptions, maps, scenes, and tokens, but with their fantasy maps bundle, you get all three for the price of two. It's a huge resource for GMs, and it's going to inspire you to go run the game. Just flipping through their maps is going to get your brain going. There's a link in the description and the pinned comment. Go check them out. You'll be glad you did. And that's where we'll pick it up next time. Thanks so much for watching this video. This channel is run by me and my girlfriend, and if you're feeling supportive, then I encourage you to come by our Patreon and get access to our exclusive Discord, uh, behind-the-scenes content, and our monthly homebrew PDFs. We've got Firearm Rules, the Warlord class, and now the Hexcrawl Rules, and a whole bunch of stuff uh, coming down the pipeline. We're always making new things, so I encourage you to check it out. If you're feeling especially generous, you might like the video, comment, share, subscribe, or hit the bell to be notified when we release new videos. Until next time, keep studying the Mystic Arts.